From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big morning of Mornings Crypto with a special broadcast going over how to choose the top coins of 2021 and the top crypto news you need to know to go into this weekend. In this recording, we're going to go over what happened in the market in the last seven days and why it could repeat itself again. Viewers have been asking me, could there be a fourth market crash? Yes, there have been three and not two. I'll explain why there's actually three that have happened. Then I'll go over how high coins can go and also how low coins can go. We'll look at the charts and understand which coins have actually done better than others and why holding a bad position is not good in, the, in a market in which there's enough coins that are actually shooting to the moon. And then finally, we'll look at coins that are outside the box, that are outside the top 50 of market capitalization, that may actually have much higher returns than anyone thought. This is Morning's Crypto, and how are you? 400,000 subscribers, a YouTube record in one year, subscribe on our way to 1 million. Make sure you subscribe. Also like this video and consider becoming a member. Let's get to the right big details to this morning. In this video, I want to go over where the charts are right now. And I also want to go over how you need to look at coins and understand that ultimately you could have a much better position in another coin that you think across the board. And I use Doge as one of the opening examples, that during not one, but three market crashes, a lot of people went into Doge thinking that this may be their opportunity. But ironically, had they bought Doge during any of the two, three market crashes over the last seven days, they would have only have gained less than 10 cents on their coin. While if they had gone into other coins, like Polygon, they would have made 300% return on their money in less than three days. That's why choosing coins in a market in which Ethereum and Bitcoin have been relatively uh, downtrending over the last few months is critical. So let's start with understanding where we are going into the weekend. It's, fr it's Thursday, and you know what that means. Friday, Saturdays, and m Sundays exhibit current trends all the time on these markets. And it's important to understand where those trends take you. I want you to know what's going on with the coins and how you need to gauge the trends. So this is what you need to know. Thursdays are generally good days. Coins are generally up on Thursdays. But in some cases, they have taken a hit. <laughs> it was a week ago today that crash number two happened. But here is what's always the case. Late Friday, early Saturday, market is up. It's always up. So you do not want to be a buyer late Friday all the way up to Saturday morning at about 11 a.m. because the market is always up. The last three weeks, it is at its highest point of the week then. So you don't want to be a buyer then because you're going to buy on the high side. You may want to be a seller because that may be the highest point of the entire week for you to get out of position. And I have a lot of people be considering getting out of positions. Second, the most the lowest day of the week and the lowest hour of the week lately has been Sundays around four o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So that could be on your horizon as well. Third, it's important to understand that there were not one, not two, but three market crashes. And most may have thought that there were only two. Let me explain what happened. We had the initial market crash when the People's Republic of China last Tuesday announced that it was banning any financial institutions in its country from engaging in cryptocurrency. Then, 48 hours later, they banned all Bitcoin mining in its country. Well, those are the two market crashes that most people think about, but there actually was a third. And that third market crash started Friday, excuse me, started Sunday midday and really took a bad hit Sunday evening. In fact, if you look at most of the market charts, you will see the worst hit of many coins happening Sunday, not last Tuesday and not last Thursday. And ironically, it's a different type of selling. Let's go over how you need to know what a certain type of selling is and how that opportunity to, for you to get in is very different. So this is a slide, not a dip. This is Dogecoin before the three market crashes. This is a sign of where you're not going to get in because the coin is going down day after day. This is, the sign, this is a dip, however. This is Polygon during one of the days before the market crashes last week. This is where Polygon dipped for a short period of time. So let's look at a chart as an example of where we are right now. So here, for example, is Ethereum. This show is currently recorded on a Wednesday evening. So we're looking at Ethereum. Look what happened here. 
let's actually pull out. So here we go. Here's Ethereum on the one-day chart. You notice something going on here? Oh boy, you do. This is a downdraft. This is a particular downdraft. And it's not particularly clear why that downdraft's going out. But to understand where the three crashes were, here we go. Now, it's important to understand that while you're watching my mouse on the screen, the first market crash is starting to come off of the seven-day chart. Why? Because it's been more than seven days. But the first market crash ostensibly ended around here. This is coming out of the first market crash. Here was the second market crash. But here was Sunday, the third market crash. Notice the difference? Of course you do. This was a programmatic sell. This was a programmatic sell. And this was not. What's going on here? Let me explain. This is a critical thing for you to understand and an opportunity for you to understand where to buy. On Tuesday, when the People's Republic of China announced the first major news announcement, there was initially a drop, but then there was a programmatic sell in which computers were authorized to close out, liquidate people's accounts because they had bought coins on debt, what's called margin. And they had to close out those accounts because the people were now too indebted to carry the margin. So there was a sharp downturn. You see that here on the second one. How do you know it's a programmatic or a computer sell-off? Because it's a straight line down. You literally can draw a ruler and it's going straight down. Now, in the case of Sunday, it's not that way, clearly. You notice it? Of course you do. Sunday started bad, then got worse. And then watch my mouse, got worse and worse and worse. This is a continual progression. It is not like back here where it's simply straight up and down. Here it's a continual progression. So what does this mean for you? It means the following, that if you want to be a buyer, if you are risk adverse, and I'll go over that in a second, you have your best opportunity to buy during this type of crash, where it's a continual downturn. It is not something happening over 30 minutes that you may miss the opportunity to buy at that rate, at that price. It's something that occur occurred over many hours. This downturn on Sunday went over many, many hours. Now, I understand that it was at, when it's as, as worse, that was not there for a very long time. But even if you buy it here or bought it over here on this on the uptick you still would have had a great position i know a lot of people do did look at those prices 1800 ethereum 1900 ethereum so you could have easily it would not have taken you any difficulty in buying ethereum at this dip because it was down there for a while and you saw it getting worse you would have been up here saying oh something's dropping with ethereum look how bad ethereum's get now you certainly had to gauge where you wanted to get in. And you didn't know at 2200 if Ethereum was going to get to 2000, but it did. And ultimately, I've been warning viewers that 1800, 1700, 1500 is an incredible buy for Ethereum. Anyone who got 1700 Ethereum at 1800 Ethereum got a great buy. But you certainly knew to get to the computer, get to the phone when you saw this happening. Here over here, you may have missed it. You may have missed it because it was too quick. So that's why it's important to know that the opportunity to buy something on a crash depends on the type magnitude of the crash. The first crash was very abrupt. It was very problematic. It was computers. So you may have missed the opportunity to get in where you wanted to. The second crash was very abrupt as well. So you may have missed the opportunity. But the Sunday drop, which I told you was going to be down Sunday. I'm telling you now, right now, it's going to be down this Sunday as well. The drop on Sunday was so continual that the worst thing you could have messed up with is just buying it a little bit too early on before the bottom, before it got to as low as going to get on Sunday. Now, before we continue with that, I want to go over something which is very important, which is you need to assess when you're buying a coin, if you're risk adverse on purchasing or risk adverse on selling. Here's what you need to know. Some people rather take risks in buying something really low on risk that it could go worse rather than not buy it at all. So I was advising viewers not to buy in on Sunday. I said the market was getting very bad. I said, stay away. We had market signals not to go in. But some people ignored my warnings and got great positions. They came in at 80 cents on Polygon. And within three days, they had $2 on Polygon. They bought Ethereum at 1800 and within uh, and today it's 2700 So they certainly got great buys. But here's what you, we need to know. Being aggressive on a purchase side is not always the same as being aggressive on the sell side. So what is aggressive on the sell side? Being aggressive on the sell side means taking your 
uh, is means not selling and and holding on the hope that it'll go higher, but it may not, and you may actually lose all your profits. The example, of course, is Doge. People who saw Doge go to 70 cents on that Saturday Night Live appearance on that Saturday morning had the opportunity to get out 70 cents. I had one friend, a reality star, who suddenly posted to social media that she bought Doge very early on, $800. She got out at six figures, but at 75 cents that Saturday morning. Other people did it, and now their Doge position is down to 36 cents. So they have lost 30% of their possible profits. So that is more risk uh, more risk tolerant on the sell side. Not risk tolerant, risk adverse on the sell side means you rather be conservative and take your profits. And a lot of people have been talking to me about taking profits. So conservative means you're looking at, for example, Polygon. And you may have bought it aggressively, but are going to be conservative on taking your profits. So let's look at an example of how that, that uh, pans out for a Polygon. So there is Dogecoin and there is Polygon. So let's jump into the chart on Polygon. Now, you see what Polygon has done over the last seven days. I have some viewers who got Polygon literally here. They got it at 80 cents. They were very aggressive in coming in. They liked the risk. They knew it could have gotten 60 cents. Now, Polygon has gone all the way up to 240. Can you imagine? That is, oh, what is 80 cents to 240? How much of a return is that? That's almost 400% return. I think it's 350% return in your money. So if you put, let's say, $5,000 in, you're almost at $15,000 out. Uh, no, actually more than that, almost $18,000 in, out. So being conservative means cashing out at a high. Being, uh, being risk tolerant means not cashing out and holding it. And guess what? If you held it, Polygon tonight is 201. So look how Polygon has come. Uh, well, we're out, of the, we're out of a larger chart. Let me pull up the one-day chart. So here's the one-day chart to give you a better example. It was two thirty. It was two forty-three this morning. Look how low Polygon is right tonight. It is now. I can't even get it. It's. Uh, I think it's two o four. It may even be lower. It's hard to grab it on the on the bottom of this chart. But it did have a dip. It did have a dip into the one something. So you potentially have lost forty cents of profit. You could have sold out up here two forty. Now you're heading to one ninety. You've lost forty cents profit. That's a huge amount of profit. <laughs> That's a lot more than most coins are even worth. So imagine how you need to assess the risk. Now let's go into some other uh, items that I want to cover with you, which is very important. People ask to me, is there different, should you have different horizons for different coins? Absolutely. So in the case of Ethereum, I've always said that if you have a, if you bought Ethereum at 1500 on a dip, at a crash, you know, 1700, you could put it away and look at it and 10 years from now it'll be 10,000. I mean, it's just, it's just sort of given. Some people said Ethereum would go to 7,000 this summer. Maybe they're right. So Ethereum is a, a long-term hold. You don't need to buy and sell and buy and sell Ethereum. You, if you buy it at a cheap price, put it away. It's going to go up. It will go up. Now, in the case of other coins, perhaps you want to have some buying and selling. <laughs> so which coins do you want to buy and sell? Coins that are up. I mean, this sounds so sort of obvious, <laughs> but I don't know why I have to always make this recording. Some people like to buy coins that are down that are down day after day after day. I'm going to buy some more. It's just losing me money. I'm going to buy some more to, to lose some more money. I don't know why they do that. Their notion is that if they continue to invest in a bad situation, that somehow it'll offset their bad situation. No, you're putting more money into a bad situation. <laughs> that doesn't work. So here is how it does work. Let's go into the split screen starting right now. And it's important for you to understand that there are coins which I can recommend to you that I like, like uh, Polygon, Synthetic, Solana, Ave, Kusama, but then it depends on the week. If you have a lot of time to be watching your phone, a lot of time to look at the charts, which we're going to do right now, then ultimately you might have the opportunity to say, hey, Ally, I noticed that coin you mentioned. It's number 75 on market capitalization. I had to go to like a crypto.com. I couldn't buy it on Gemini. I couldn't buy it on Coinbase. I couldn't buy it on the major platforms. I had to go to a secondary platform, but I bought it. And boy, you're right. It is up 85% in two days. It is heading to 200% in three days. I'm going to get out. I don't, I don't know much about this coin, but it's had a really good run. I don't know if it's going to continue that run. So let's look at coins that are potential along that line. And what are the issues at, at, at hand is you want to look at coins that are really define, the defi, define mean, uh, are against the market trend. So right now, which is um, 
which is a Tuesday evening. Uh, uh, tonight, the market is down 2%, not a lot, 2%. So is there any coins that are absolutely killing it? Are they absolutely just blowing it out? And what are we going to look for? We're going to go down crypto market, uh, coinmarketcap.com on the split screen. We're going to look at any coin that is up 50% 24 hours, 30% 24 hours, 50% seven days. And you will probably look at me like, really? Is there anything like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I detailed them last night, and I'm going to detail them right now. So let's look at some of the coins. We may have to go lower on our charts to find them, but let's see where they are. So um, there is Hot Holo, which was on fire <laughs> yesterday. Uh, it was up big numbers for the 24 and big numbers for the 7. They are now up up, they're now they're up one percent right now in a very down market tonight, but they're up uh, but they're up thirty three percent for the seven day. There's chills C I C uh, which is Chi C H Z up fourteen percent is twenty four and both and up fourteen percent uh, seven days. But then come the coins which you may have heard from me uh, last night. E N J number sixty six on market capitalization. It's engine coin. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these numbers. 37% up now, 50% up seven day. Yeah, you're, you're not mishearing me. 36-7% up today, 50% up seven days. And I think I got a screen. I think I got a chart on engine. <clears throat> on engine. Is this engine? No, that's Cardano. Is this engine? Uh, no, that's Shiva. <laughs> it's this engine. There's engine. Okay. The engine that could, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Uh, not that I have to worry about how to pronounce it. I just have to worry about how to make money on it. All right. So let's look at engine. Now look at this chart. This is fascinating. So you have to understand what you're getting yourself involved with, with a coin like his. This is a, a coin that is not done well over three months clearly not done well. Look at this chart. You're looking at a three-month chart. Here's crash number one. Here's crash number two. Here's Sunday's crash. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, way to the moon. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> you know, if you look in a seven-day chart, you're like, wow, seven-day, one day. Oh my goodness, one day. But then when you look at the three-month, you're like, what the hell is that? What the world is that going on here? Now, I haven't even looked at the six-month. Let's look at the six-month together. Oh, interesting. I did not expect that. I was expecting the bad news. So this is a coin that really went up, went down, coming back up. Uh, can we look out a little further? Let's see um, where it is further right now. Oh, interesting. Very volatile. So look at this mountain. Ran up the mountain, went really high, skyrocketed down, then up, and then plummeted. Boy, that's scary. That's nearly all the entire mountain. It went back down, and now it's zooming up half the mountain. So here, what you, here's what you would think, and I know what you're thinking right now. Let me move my mouse away so you can see it. Look at the end of where we are now on engine. So this is how you can gauge your risk. Well, you could certainly say engine could go as high as how it did uh, at the top of this mountain. It's going half up, half up the mountain. It went up this mountain very quickly before. Let's say it only goes to this mountain. It went up this mountain very quickly before. It's halfway up. So maybe this position right here could go to this position. I'll just get out. I'll just get up to that position. I'll get out. Or maybe I'll go a little bit higher. I'll go to this mountain. And then if I see it downturn, I'll get out because I don't, you know, this looks like a coin that goes up and down a lot. And maybe I could do this a few times with this coin. Now, maybe you're very risk averse. You want to go to here, but you better be watching your phone or your, or your app because if you go to here, understand you could go way down to there. That's a big drop. So there you understand how you can make, you can gauge where your coin is going potentially. Um, and you can, and the good news is the coin has really never gone back below this. So if there is another market crash, you know, maybe go a little bit lower, but you won't lose an enormous position. So that is a great example of how you can gauge how much upside you can get potentially if everything goes right and how you can gauge your downside as well. That's engine. And that is just, that's up 36% right now, up 47% for the seven day, E-N-J. 
ironically, a lot of the other coins near it that were doing well last uh, on our on our Tuesday broadcast are not doing as well right now. So Mana, M-A-N-A, which is Decentraland, was up double digits on both 7-day and 24-hour. It's losing them right now. Um, which other coins? Is there any other coin that just blowing the numbers out of the ballpark? Uh, hot was <laughs> H-O-T. It was blowing it out, but it's not doing it right now. And then comes OMG Network. So that's interesting. It's up 10% for the day, 36%. Not enormous blowout number. But let's pull out l lower and let's see if there's any other coins. Interesting. So that's really interesting. Uh, if you had watched my Tuesday shows, I had several coins that were up 20 to 30% um, on, on Tuesday. But by Wednesday, um, we are seeing less of them. So very, very interesting. That is why when you're choosing a coin, you can't just look at a 24-hour window. You may see a 30 or 40% 24 hour and a 50% seven day, but I want you to, you need to know that you're going to get that money several times. Let's go back to the coins that I had recommended before the panda, before the, uh, the, the three crashes. And then I want to go over something that I want you to understand. I recommend a Polygon, Cardano, Kusame, Ave. I also recommended a Solana and Synthetic. Of those coins, uh, Solana had trouble getting out of the three crashes initially. Synthetic got out of it really well. And then if we look at the other coins, um, Ave struggled initially. Cardano did well and Polygon did well. So let's look at um, how you gauge whether your coin is a good buy or not a good buy. This is not a good buy. People thought that they could get into Doge after this third market crash at, and here we are, here's the third market crash here, 29 cents. Look, I mean, 34 cents. Where is that return? Now, some people want to do this, this thing that I, I don't, I don't subscribe to, which is pep themselves up all the time. They want to tell themselves, oh, but it's going to do well. I have a feeling it's going to, I have a sense. I just sense, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to buy a coin that actually is exhibiting the upside that you like on the charts. I don't want you to look at the chart and then say, I have a feeling it's going to turn great. Um, let's look at Toast 24 hour. Okay, I have a feeling Doge is going to have a great evening. No, I, you know, here's a chart. It's not having a good evening. Uh, let's look at Polygon right now. So here's Polygon also getting clamored. But Polygon has really delivered. Look how it is delivered for people coming up this hill. Now, it is, a, it is on a downturn right now. But um, it, it, it can afford that because it's had such a nice run. That's also an important thing you can understand. Is if a coin is continually delivered day after day, big amounts, it can afford a little bit of a downturn. But in the case of Ethereum, before the two market crashes, Ethereum was down 3% every single day. So you can't afford to keep on having day after day down. A Polygon, uh, you can allow a little, bit of, of, uh, a little bit of downside across the board. Next, let's look out at um, Polygon for a longer chart so we get a sense of where we should be and where we shouldn't be. All right, so you see how Polygon has really, it went to 220 it went to it went uh, to eighty cents. You can't really get it on this chart, and then it went up to two twenty. So we know that Polygon has the potential of being a two dollar coin. We know that. Has there ever been a three dollar coin? No. Does it have the potential of going to eighty cents again? Sure. <laughs> it did it once. It'll do it again. Um, and that is where you want to buy. That is how you want to think in your buying process. You want to say uh, this coin has done this before. I'm hoping it's going to do it again so I can get it that way. Here's an example. It, it went to th a coin you bought at a dollar. It has gone to $2 before. It's done $2 a few times. You're hoping it goes to 2 and you get out. You double your money. Or, uh, or the coin has fallen to $0.70. Cents. It's at $0.90. Cents. It's fallen a few times recently. You think it's going to fall to 7 you, You're going to be patient. Patience is a virtue. Patience on buying is a virtue. You want to buy things at the right price. So that is another thing to understand. And... 
if you look at the charts, you know what can potentially happen. And it generally does happen. <laughs> There's always an opportunity. I have always said in investing that if you want the price point, give it a time, it's, it'll get to the point that you can buy into it. Now, on the sell side, that's a whole other side. You never know how high a coin's going to go. But on the buy side, you can always really take your time and be aggressive and hope it really gets to that price. I don't want to spend it. I don't want to pay for what it is now. It's going to drop. And I want you to do that as well. As we go into the split screen, what I want you to understand as you go into the new day is that ultimately, while I can say to you, I like I like Polygon, I like Synthetic, I like Solana, I like Aave, I like Cardano, um, and I like the, the new coins, which I showed you in this broadcast, like, en, like e Engine, <laughs> um, I want you to do what I did as well. I want you to be empowered to do what I, what I just did. I want you to go through coinmarketcap.com. I don't want you to just look one time a day because the markets are up in the morning and down in the afternoon and then up in the evening. So I want to look a few times a day. See if anything is just really up. 20% one day, 30% the next day, or 30 and 30, 50 and 50. I don't mean 4%. I don't mean 7%. I mean monstrous percents. Because there's something at issue there. That means there's something that really resonates. Why? Because the market is not up 50%. The market's up 3 and 4% lately. The market has not been up 20% a day. So if a coin is doing 50%, it is really outperforming the market. So that is a coin you want to look at. And then you want to look at its chart, 7-day, th 3-month, 6 months, to ultimately see if there's guidance in there that gives you a sense of where that coin may be a potential buy. And finally, the case of ENG, which you saw in this broadcast. You saw the coin has really taken a bat, took a bad hit during the third crash. But ultimately, it really has been running up. And by looking at three prior hills, three prior peaks, you sense it could get to the, at least one of those peaks. And if it got to one of those peaks, you'll double your money. And you can get out. You can sell. Or you could really be cautious and watch to see if it goes a little bit higher. you got to stay on your phone. If it gets that first peak, you need to get on that phone. Perhaps set an alert that says, if it gets the first peak, I'm going to set the alert. Because maybe I want to get out, but maybe I want to stay in and sell out a little bit higher. But I need to be on my phone or watching the app. And then if it gets higher, then you get out. Ultimately, if you see three peaks really around the same level, don't think you're going to go higher. Don't think you're going to go higher unless you're going to hold this for six or seven months. If you're holding it for a few weeks, a few days to get out a 300% return on your money, then do that. Sell, because guess what? That coin has also gone down before, losing 70% in a few days, and you come back in. And that's how you make money. So with that, I hope this video has been helpful to you. It's important to understand when you're buying a coin that ultimately... You may not have a lot of money to invest. You may only have $20. You may only have $30. And what I recommend you to do is not buy a bad coin. It sounds so obvious. But don't put $20 into a bad coin so that it's $10 in two days. And then you say, well, what am I going to do now? I started with $20. Now I have $10. I really wanted that other coin LA talked about, Polygon. But I, I, I'm in this bad coin. And I started this process with $20 by watching another YouTuber now at $10. If I got out of the position, I only have $10 again to Polygon. You want to just start with good coins. You want to start with good coins at good prices. Remember, a good coin at a good price, it sends you on a trajectory of going up. I want you to be cash positive day one. That involves choosing the right coins at the right time, being patient, not being... Um, not being impatient, <laughs> and determining what your risk aversion is. Am I risk tolerant on getting in at a really down market, but I'm conservative on getting out and understanding my profits? And there you go. I hope this video has been helpful for you, so make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video. Join me next on Evenings Crypto this evening at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then always watch our overnight show. Make sure you subscribe. 400,000 subscribers in one year, a YouTube record. Next stop, 1 million. Stay with me, stay informed, and stay with LA.